I live here. Eighth Man DVD. Cartoon Classics. Son of a the dee 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 Oh, son of a dee 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 dee
back, please, the back. Look cute, too, Doc. We're gonna have roast rabbit. 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 We're gonna have roast. Ooh. to the farm and the winner of many blue ribbons. He is trained to perform in every gate. First, let's see you do a trot. Now the gallop. That's fine. Now do a canter. Oh, I'm happy about the whole thing. The way that you walk, the way that you talk. Hey, hey. That's enough of that. Here we find the farmer's faithful old watchdog. Though he is no longer very active, he still does a few little odd jobs around the house. One of his chores is to fetch the newspaper. Oh, there's the paper now. I can hardly wait to see what happened to Dick Tracy. Here is a group of cute little piggies playing in the mud. Well, what are they up to? They seem fascinated by that clock. Oh, well. Here's a proud mother hen, carefully watching over her eggs. 
anxiously awaiting the eventful day. What a happy little family this will be. What's this? A weasel, the ruthless thief of the barnyard, watching his chance to sneak in and steal those defenseless little eggs. He draws closer and closer and closer. we find many species of bird life. The birds always... Oh, look up there. No, no, over to the left. See? A little owl nestling inside the tree trunk. an interesting sight. A young couple laboriously building their nest with a bit of string from here and a piece of straw from there. A little twig, a bit of string, piece of straw, a little twig, a bit of string, piece of straw, a little twig, bit of string, piece of straw, a little twig, string, straw, twig, string, straw, twig, string, straw, twig, string, straw, twig. of the woods, field mice make their home. Here we see one of the most common types. Say, he seems to be a bit worried. Tell me, little fellow, what seems to be troubling you? I don't know, Doc. I... I just keep hearing things. Even the tiniest of insects, such as the ants, have a language all their own. Emerging from the opening comes a female of the species. If you listen very closely, you can hear her calling to her young. Modern farm is conducted on a business like, well, here are those little piggies again. Say, piggies, why don't you go off and play? <coughs> oh, well, suit yourself. Here is one of the strangest friendships that has ever been known. Natural enemies, yet living together as friends. A cat and a mouse. Tell me, is it true that the cat takes good care of you? And keeps you nice and warm? Well, that's truly a friendship. Now, before we leave you, is there anything that you would like to say to your friends in the audience? So, as the day draws to a close and the sun sinks slowly in the west, we reluctantly take our leave of the farm. Well, the piggies again. Are they going to stay there all night? What in the world can the attraction be?
backward, O time and your flight. Make me a child again, just for tonight. And between these covers, we find these immortal favorites. Sleeping Beauty. Remember the lovely princess who was bewitched into a deep slumber until her Prince Charming came to break the spell? boy who got his name because he was no bigger than a man's thumb. Let's pay this interesting family a visit. Good evening, Mr. and Mrs. Thumb. Where's little Tom? Are you Tom Thumb? Uh, uh, yeah, that's me. Uh, why, I thought you were no bigger than a man's thumb. How did you get so big? Uh, vitamin B1. <laughs> the Grasshopper and the Ant. The story of the industrious little ant and the lazy grasshopper. Wolf. Wolf! Wolf! Help! Help the wolf! Wolf! Help! Help! Wolf! 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 wolf. <laughs> what a joy! <laughs> what a dope! <laughs> There's a lad who can stand some discipline. What a dope! You'll learn his lesson someday. <laughs> Jack and the Beanstalk. The story of the boy who climbed a beanstalk only to be met at the top by a ferocious two-headed giant who forced Jack to run for his life. Why did you quit? Uh, he's been sick. <laughs> the wolf in sheep's clothing, the fifth columnist of his day. By means of a disguise, he preyed upon unsuspecting little sheep. Nights gave us the story of Aladdin and his wonderful lamp. All Aladdin had to do was to rub the lamp and presto, the genie appeared. I dream of genie with the light brown hair. kid again. Oh, oh. 
What a joke. <laughs> what a joke. <laughs> hey, young fella. You're going to yell wolf once too often. Hey, go on, go on. Mind your own business. Mind your own business. Can a guy have a little fun? A session in the woodshed wouldn't do that boy any harm. And here's a bird you wouldn't mind having in your own home. A goose that lays golden eggs. Hey, wait a minute. You're supposed to lay golden eggs. Not anymore, brother. I'm doing my bit for national defense. Old Mother Hubbard went to the cupboard to get her poor dog a bone. Remember this little nursery rhyme? This little piggy went for to market. This little piggy, he's gone for to stay home. This little piggy, he's have roast beef and smash potatoes. And this poor little piggy, he don't have anything, all kinds of things to eat. And this little piggy, he's for to crying like anything. Wee, 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 all the way. For crying out, pit's sake, mother! Be careful! My corn! Cinderella and her glass slipper. The little girl Whoa! who... Whoa! Help! Help somebody! Help! Uh-uh. He's at it again. Whoa! Whoa! Help! Help the wolf! Time America faces the greatest demand for food in our history. Food for our army and navy. Food for the invasion front. Food for ourselves on the home front. Food to help our fighting allies and the people of the allied countries. It takes pounds of food a day to keep a soldier on the fighting front. Millions of pounds of food each day. The best way to supply our men overseas and our fighting allies with most of the foods they need is in dried form and in cans. In addition to the military, other factors affect our canned food supply. Take tin, for example. Our major peacetime sources have been cut off by the enemy. Our railroads and other transportation facilities are being taxed to their utmost, carrying munitions, armaments, war supplies and troops. That leaves less shipping space for civilian foodstuffs. And then there's the farm labor shortage. All this means that we at home will have less canned fruits, vegetables, soups, and other processed foods for our use. Without rationing of these foods, some people would get more than their fair share. Others would not even get what they need. But rationing assures everyone of his fair share. That is why your government is rationing canned fruits and vegetables and other processed foods. Until now, we have been rationing one item at a time, like sugar and coffee. But processed fruits and vegetables are not one product. They are hundreds of products in hundreds of different brands, grades, sizes, varieties. In cans, bottles, packages, in dried and frozen form. One cannot say, as in the case of sugar, each citizen will be allowed two cans of peaches a week or four cans of spinach. It may be true that some people don't like spinach. Some of you may want to buy canned corn. Others of you may want to buy canned peas or spinach. 
So the question arises. What method of rationing can be used so that each citizen may get his fair share of canned fruits and vegetables and other commercially packed foods and that will still allow freedom of choice? The system which has been adopted and has worked successfully in England for over a year is called point rationing. In the point rationing system, all these foods are grouped together and your ration book is used to buy those you like. Those items which are not so scarce will take fewer points. Items which are more scarce will take more points. Point stamps to buy these ration goods are in War Ration Book 2. This book contains blue and red stamps. Blue stamps are to be used for canned fruits, vegetables, soups, juices, and other processed foods. Red stamps will be used for meat. This is a typical page of blue stamps in War Ration Book 2. Notice that the stamps are given point numbers, 8, 5, 2, 1. Everyone will get 48 points each period. That means you will use blue stamps ABC for the first period, DEF for the second, and so forth. Point values will be the same in all stores. Every store in which you shop must post the official table of point values of all point rationed items in all sizes. From time to time, point values may change, and stores will post the new point values. Here's an example of how point rationing works. This lady, all decked out with her family's brand new ration books, starts out to do some shopping. First of all, she wants to buy a can of peas. She wants to buy a can of chicken soup. and she wants some dried prunes. Well, there's our list complete, and all that remains to be done is to tear out 14 points in stamps and pay the grocer. But wait just a minute. Just for fun, let's take another look at that point ration table. Hey, slow down there. What about those string beans? Why, there are only three points in the size we want. If we buy those instead of peas, we can save five points. And what's this? Fresh apples don't require any points. Well, why not buy those instead of dried prunes? And save another point. So there we are, our shopping list complete. With the same amount of goods, and with six points saved for future use. Smart girl. She's smart in more ways than one, too. Because she used her large stamps first, wisely saving her small ones for low-point purchases later on. Because she shops early in the day, and so helps her grocer. Because wherever possible, she substitutes unrationed fresh fruits and vegetables for canned or processed ones. This is point rationing. This is the way to assure everyone here at home an equal opportunity to get the same fair share. This is the way to assure food for our fighting men and for our fighting allies. Share and share alike is the American way to victory.
I'm in a streak of hard luck. Say, Hootman, what are you doing in that grand car? 
I belong in it. I got myself a master now, see? Three square meals a day. No more bumming around the streets for me. All I gotta do is wag my tail and make out I'm glad to see him when he comes home. Then it's nice doggy this and nice doggy that. That's a cinch. That sounds very good. But how did you manage to put it over in the first place? Well, one day I determines to get me a master. So I goes to a ritzy district, way over on Park Avenue, where all of them swell penthouses is, through the fancy entrance, up to the top floor of a classy apartment house, and I rings at one of the doors. Shucks, who in the wicked world can that be? Every time I get in the, the, the tub, that darn bell rings. <laughs> it, and, and, and it never fails. <laughs> Hello, bub. Hey, I got a preposition for you. Look, you ain't got no dog, and I ain't got no master. What do you say we gets together? You know, let's moige. Here, try me for size. And I'm affectionate, too. Where are we going? Bye-bye? I'm uh, sorry, but I don't want a dog. Well, uh, the, uh, that's that. tricks to, you know, sit up, roll over, even play dead. Hey, watch me make like rigor mortis. And I'm very affectionate, too. Oh. without love, love without you, that does it. This is the end. <laughs> Goodbye, cruel world. Oh, 
Oh, puppy, speak to me. Good old doggy, nice puppy. Oh, oh you, you poor thing. Gosh, I didn't know you cared. I'm a bad boy. That's all, folks. Robin Hood. <laughs> You're gonna be Robin Hood. All right. You can be little John. Now, let's see. Who's gonna be the rich old villain? Now, who's gonna be the old villain? Now, let's see. Who's gonna be the mean old rich old villain? Who's gonna be the old... Me? So excited? All you gotta do is march to the forest with your treasure, and we'll rob you and give it to the poor. Won't that be fun? He wants to be the villain. Don't ya? <laughs> Save her. 
<laughs> and I like little squirrels very, very much. I love little squirrels, <laughs> little fat, juicy squirrels, <laughs> especially with carrots and potatoes and... Uh, Onions. <laughs> uh, doesn't that just make your mouth water? We better break down the door. Look, fellas, get me out of here. See? Get me oh. out of here. Look, fellas, please get me out of here. Guess we'll have fox stew tonight, boys. Look, fellas, I'm young, strong, healthy. Don't let him kill me! Oh, oh my gosh! I'm afraid to die! to plug you, Mr. Duck, but I'm a sportsman. A great, great sportsman. 
A great sportsman, eh? Sportsman. Listen, sport, you don't know the meaning of fair play. What chance has a poor, helpless, fluffy, little winged creature like me against you? You with your bullets, and your shotgun, and your knife, and your dip call, and your hunting coat, and your hunting dog, and all kind of stuff like that there. What protection have I got? A bulletproof vest, I suppose. <laughs> How does that get there? How'd you like to meet me in a fair fight, Mr. Sport? All things being equal, man to man, Marquis of Queensbury rules. <laughs> that's different, eh? Yeah, that's something else again. Yeah. You don't like that, do you, sportsman? No. You don't like it. Ladies and gentle ducks, in that corner. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Cole. <laughs> He's a dog. <laughs> oh, you can have him. <laughs> what a tramp. <laughs> Elmer Fudd. Hello. <laughs> This corner, a duck who needs no introduction, that outstanding exponent of clean sportsmanship, that champion of champions, your friend and mine, our own, our beloved Daffy, good to his mother, Duck. <laughs> Now, boys, fight clean. Oh, brother! No rough stuff. None of this. Or this. Or this. Or like so. Or this. Or this. Or this. You understand? Yeah, you mean uh, none of this? <coughs> or this? Or like so? Or this? <coughs> Huh? How about a little of this? Absolutely, uh-uh. You know, there's something awfully screwy about this fight. Or my name isn't Larimore. And it isn't. You got him punchy, champ. He's practically a dead already. Now get in there, fight. Go on in there, knock him out. Give it to him, champ. Let him have it, champ. Hmm, getting a little thin on top. How about a little something to stimulate the scalp? Now shake hands. Which hand do you take? Mm, uh... That one. Nope. Wrong. Guess again. All right, all right. I'll take that over there. <laughs> Ain't he a dope? You sure this is the one you want? <laughs> You're right. <laughs> the right one. And here's round one coming up. One, three, nine, ten. You're out. The winner and new champion, Daffy Duck. Not the one to complain, Mr. Wefferee, but I thought you said no woof stuff. None of this, or this, or this, or like so, or this, or this, or this. That's all, folks.
done that. <laughs> wonderful morning, wonderful morning, great morning, fine day, wonderful morning. <laughs> Just said that, didn't I? <laughs> fine morning. Time to get up now, gotta get him up. <laughs> Getting late. Can't sleep all day, you know, no, no, no. <laughs> I sleep all day. No, no, I don't sleep all day myself. <laughs> Insomnia. <laughs> Who threw that? Who wants to know? Why don't you bounce that ball off his dome? I've been dreaming and scheming a way to escape. As the warden and guards, they all bore me. Life in prison was never meant for me. Although I hate, I said, I hate to leave my cell, my tears. A sorry, a so very, very, very sorry, warden dear. About time a screaming from here. And now I am going to go. Yes, I am going to scram. Ah, yes, I'm going to go. I'm going to scram. I'm going to take it on the lamb. A go! Great possibilities, fine boy, fine boy. He's gone, he's gone, he escaped. Why don't somebody do something, do something? Say, that's a good idea, maybe I can do something. Sure.
Boy?
equilibrium. Opportunity is nothing. Eighth Man DVD. Cartoon Classics.